Yes, now, a very important story this. It's been more than eight months since the Taliban returned to power in Afghanistan following a military offensive and, of course, that pullout by U.S. forces. Since then, women have been banned from secondary education and some areas of paid work. Well, and now the Taliban has ordered all Afghan women to wear the full veil, the burqa, at all times. So the blue burqa was a, a global symbol, wasn't it, of the Taliban's previous regime, very oppressive regime, mm. in the 1990s. With well, its introduction now announced by the Ministry for the Propagation of Virtue and the Prevention of Vice on Saturday, so obviously I mean, it does sound normal. Orwellian, really, doesn't it? You can well, it is. more Orwellian than that. Uh, this all male ministry Classic. replaced the country's ministry for women in August 2021. Well, we're delighted to be joined now by Nargis Nehan, a former Afghan politician, former Minister of Mines and Petroleum as well. Thank you so much for joining us to speak about this. Many of us in the West will not be surprised at this news because despite the fact the Taliban said actually we're going to run the country in a reformed way, women will have more rights. People who know what the Taliban are like knew this would happen. Did you know? Well, this was something that even during the peace process, we kept on reminding the international community and especially the U.S. that um, we need to have a proper uh, mechanism in place for uh, accountability of the Taliban because there is no guarantee the Taliban would implement what they are promising in Doha during the negotiation. Unfortunately, the peace process was rushed. And as a result of that, today we see that the uh, Taliban, first of all, took over Afghanistan uh, in a manner that uh, did not end up in a political settlement and, um, and then lack of recognition from the international community which uh, free freezing of the assets of Afghanistan. And as a result of that, we have massive starvation going on in the country. Uh, the girls are banned from the secondary school. And on top of that, uh, this decree was something that we knew that it was going to come, either today or tomorrow. It just took them eight months to come up with this decree. Uh, this was something that we all knew about it. And uh, we kept on defining the, reminding the international community. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't hear from us. And uh, today, the Afghan women are paying the highest price for the lack of responsibility and irresponsible negotiation, peace deal and withdrawal of the international community. Yeah, absolutely. And look, this is a very visible sign, you could say, of male oppression of women. I know some people would disagree and say that it's religious dress, etc. But um, yeah, I mean, realistically, do you think that most, you know, do, do most, most women in, in, in Afghanistan sure, surely mustn't want to do this? They've, they've had a taste of relative freedom, haven't they? And, and for it to be snatched away now, it must be even more galling for them. Look, it's very difficult. You can live in a country uh, which is poor. You can live in a country which is insecure. You can, you can live in poverty as long as you have the hope that you can change the situation. You can change the situation of yourself, your, your life, and your country. Uh, what we are facing right now in Afghanistan is a situation of hopelessness and helplessness, uh, where we know that the situation is deteriorating very rapidly. Our people are uh, uh, suffering and uh, we are starving. But then on top of that, we are also having this sense of helplessness that we can't do anything about it. And this is really difficult to live with. Afghanistan was an Islamic country before 15th August. Uh, Afghanistan, unlike Iran and Saudi Arabia, the previous administration did not have any formal policy about women observing a job, but still all women around the country were observing a job all the time and were working. And we were an Islamic country. But then suddenly they are coming up with this decree, which is not putting only pressure on women, but also the, uh, putting in the question the moral and virtue of the families that how they have raised women that now the government is deciding for them. This will also have implication for the families in terms of domestic violence. Imagine in this situation the decree that they have issued uh, a young brother of 8 years old can question her his sister of maybe 20 or 30 years old and saying that oh you have not uh, observed the job properly and I'm going to be held accountable on this so I don't allow you to wear this or that or go here or do what. Same thing goes with the son with the mothers. The mother can now, the sons can control their mothers 
based on this decree because they have held accountable the male members of the family, not the woman, if the woman are not observing the, the job that they have explained it. OK, look, I'm just going to ask you this because we get a lot of emails in about this from members of the public, OK? So I just want to hear from you. You obviously know Afghanistan incredibly well and you know the, the population incredibly well, former minister, of course. Look, a lot of people that email in here say that potentially the local population could have done more to resist the Taliban. Is that true? I mean, we need to put ourselves in the shoes of the local population and see uh, what we would have done. Uh, a regime that is uh, committing war crime across the team, a regime that's so brutal uh, that you know, like if, even if the girls are going out on the streets uh, just asking for their education right and freedom, uh, they, are going, they are putting in prison, they are being detained and they are being tortured. How do you expect the uh, people to organize themselves, the citizens, to have resistance against them? But look, Look, despite all these fear that people are having from the Taliban, despite the experience that they have with the Taliban, but still so many girls are uh, going uh, out on the streets and they are raising their voice. Those of us who are in exile outside the country and those of us who are inside Afghanistan, we are constantly raising our voice. Even today, I'm sure you will come across many videos and the social media that the girls have began to organize themselves again, raising their voice against the new decree. The problem that we have is that we don't see any ear listening to us inside the country and as well as in the international platform. Well, Nargis, thank you so much for joining us and talking yeah. about this very depressing situation. And, uh, yeah. you know, let's just hope, uh, if, if it's not too much wishful thinking, that something changes and that the millions of young women who will be growing up in Afghanistan do have a bright future. Let's hope some of them will do. Nargis Nahan there, a former Afghan politician and former Minister of Mines and Petroleum. Um, yeah, yeah we... we, we I'd like to say we all knew this was coming, yeah. really, because we weren't expecting the Taliban to necessarily give women rights and no. have this massive change no. of heart and have this massive change of ideological position. It no. was only inevitable, I would say. Well, it's even more galling, isn't it? I mean, the idea that, you know, the Taliban... Oh, the Taliban have promised us. They've promised us. This is more specifically Joe Biden than anything else. But they've promised us, oh, are you going to treat women fairly? Well, yeah, obviously not. Are you? It was about 36 hours before there was video footage of women being flogged in rural Afghanistan. Now they've got a way uh, the burqa, they've been banned from uh, education. I mean, it, this, is, this is just the Taliban. It's not yeah. Taliban 2.0. It's just exactly as they were before. And, yeah. yeah, this is it. What did people expect when the Taliban took charge? We have seen the condemnation of Putin rather than the appeasement by the West. Um, but it can't bring itself to condemn a medieval religious system. This is from Tony. I think that's quite well, or Ant, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but uh, there you go. And, yeah, I think it's, it's interesting, isn't it, really? It's all gone very quiet about Afghanistan. And I, yeah, I, well, I'm a bit annoyed about that. I suppose we're dealing with uh, another well, one. Well, yeah, there's now. a lot going on. Uh, a lots, of ha lots happened. The pandemic was going on and mm. the cost of living is now going on, the war in Ukraine. So I think it has just fallen down on the agenda.